And we're back with the fabulous Joff Thyre. Do hey, any, hello. Do we have any announcements before Joff uh, gets started? Larry, do you have uh, some SANS conferences you want to plug? Uh, just, uh, we got one coming up in Orlando where I'm teaching uh, 617 and uh, I'm doing 571, the two-day um, uh, mobile security course uh, at RSA coming up uh, in a little over a week. And uh, I don't know of anything else off the top of my head that I can think of um, that's been announced, but uh, they do have a page over at SANS, and that's, it should be in the show notes, and you can check them out there. Sounds great. Thanks, Larry. Joff, take it away. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. I, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about a uh, project that we have going on uh, and to uh, do a little presentation about it. So I'm going to uh, share screen here and uh, move on to presentation format here. All right. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Could you confirm that for me, Paul? I can confirm I can see that. Thank you very much. So uh, the project's called Django SCA, which is a Django Web Framework static source code analysis tool uh, that we've been working on last year and a little bit this year. Um, first of all, just a brief introduction for those who don't know what about uh, what Django is all about. Uh, Django is just a web, a web development framework based on Python, not just a, but uh, provides a fantastic programming infrastructure for web applications, following a model view controller paradigm and essentially encourages loose coupling and strict separation between its application components. I'm not going to give a full tutorial on Django, but just a brief introduction and then get into the uh, static code analysis uh, code that we have. So Django has a settings.py, which is a Python module that controls the global variables in a project. Um, examples are uh, a debug variable or allowed hosts or session cookie secure, and things like this. Um, it, with regard to the uh, model view controller paradigm within Django itself, um, models.py is a common convention describing database tables uh, represented by Python classes. Uh, views.py is our business logic uh, in a web, web page. Uh, and then our urls.py in a Django paradigm is uh, providing our mapping between regular expressions, essentially, and, and URLs and view functions in an application. Um, that's what gives us our separation within the Django framework itself. Um, there's, a, there's another concept in Django that's important, and that is templates uh, providing us a way of dividing the actual HTML display logic away from the code aspect of, of a web framework project. So uh, a template has traditional HTML in it and also has variables contained within it uh, that you can render from your Django projects. There is some basic uh, conditional logic in templates as well. Uh, for item, in, in item list here is showing just how to display a list uh, in, in a Django template, for example. So Django has some security features. Uh, this is about a Django static source code analysis uh, project, so we need to talk a little bit about Django's security features. Uh, Cross-site scripting protection, uh, templates that... Uh, uh, escape dangerous characters, for example, are uh, a cross-site uh, scripting protection. Uh, cross-site request forgery protection, uh, provided you uh, enabled middleware and use it, of course. Um, SQL injection protection is, is the idea of using a Python model in a Django project instead of raw queries within the code. Uh, session protection is a session middleware in Django and setting cooking variables uh, cookie cooking uh, variables correctly. And then clickjacking protection is there as well with using the appropriate uh, middleware within uh, the Django framework. So now moving on quickly into Django SCA, and I, I apologize, that's a very brief introduction of Django, but I can't get too deep into that. So what the SCA project is, is an automated static code analysis tool designed specifically to warn about exposing application information through error messages, provide reminders to use the appropriate security set, uh, settings in a Django project, uh, provide reminders about the dangers of turning off specific security features. Um, input sanitization is, is particularly egregious in this area. Uh, provide us reminders about the dangers of breaking the model view controller uh, paradigm and doing things like encoding SQL directly into the application. And then also give us an ability to be flexible and extensible so that configuration can be localized to individual needs. 
Django SCA uses components of Django itself and the, abst uh, the Python abstract syntax tree parser. Django SCA is very heavily uh, uses regular expressions as well. Um, is designed to run a full Django project source code analysis recursively and then output the warnings of that analysis categorized into OWASP top nine, top nine code review flaw categories with the file no, uh, names and the line numbers. Um, in terms of requirements to run, Django SCA is literally just needs Python, 2.7x two, two is enough, uh, and Django, e even as low as 1.3.1 and up, Django 1.4 is, is more common these days. So from a processing order perspective with, with Django SCA, what we're doing here is <clears throat> performing initially a global settings check in the settings.py. It's broken up into four different sections, checking required fields, recommended variables, recommended apps and middleware, and then a password hashing, hashing check. And then the second phase of the processing is a recursive descent through the entire Django project looking at the HTML, XML, text, and Python files. Um, if we have a file that's Python extension, we'll go ahead and parse it using the abstract syntax uh, tree. Can't say that three times fast. And then uh, perform some code logic checks within the abstract syntax tree context. Um, if we have a cross-domain.xml file, We'll perform cross-domain security checks, and if any other file, we'll just perform our regular expression security checks. And then finally, perform a summary and report all our findings to screen or an output file. So the Python logic checks are, um, are populating a list of imported modules and classes and function names, and then performing some logic checks based on that information. Uh, model forms class is the first one that's implemented, and we warn about some unsafe meta class field assignments and some other form character fields in that class. The uh, CR errors and warnings, uh, the four that we're outputting, basic syn syntax of the, the strings that is in the configuration file listed here. In terms of security, what do we want to look for? Uh, what variables might be a security issue? Allowed hosts, debug, installed apps, middleware classes, password hash, uh, template debug, session cookie secure, se session cookie HTTP only. Just examples of what might be useful to us from a security perspective. We want to look for security of module imports. What are we importing? Is it good? Is it bad or otherwise? We want to look at the security of our templates. Are we explicitly turning the escape functions off? Auto escape off or marking a variable with a filter as safe, for example. Are we looking at this? We're going to be looking at the security of the code in general. Some regular expressions here might represent problems like do we have a SQL, in, uh, SQL statement within the code itself? Do we have a cross-site uh, request forgery exemption filter in the code? Do we have an OS system call? So from a configuration files perspective, we lay it out basically in terms of the, the two sections of parsing in the project. Here's an example of the configuration file. And, uh, and again, this is a very quick overview. We have settings required, second, settings recommended variables, settings recommended middleware, settings recommended apps. Then in the second section from the parser class, we have import checks. We have regular expressions on SQL statements. We have regular expressions on CSRF exempt, regular expressions on safe filters. These are the types of things that I highlighted earlier that would be examples of things we need to check. So just a real quick demonstration. Um, and let me take a moment to share the app. Make sure you zoom in. Really Will well. do. Uh, switch screen. Sorry, I'm uh, You're Skype broadcasting Im me. Yeah. Yeah. impaired sometimes. Okay, we should see Zoom a terminal in. window. Zoom in a little more. Uh, we'll just make it bigger. Pump it up. Is that good? Bigger? Do it make the text bigger? Yeah. Like uh, Command Plus. How's that? A little bigger. All right, hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. That's uh, Yeah, right there. That's good. Is that catching up? Yeah, that's good. Okay, good. So the, the, the project uh, comes down from Git, and it has Django SCA.py, which is our executable, and we have Django SCA.rules, which is our default rules statement. So what I just showed on the screen was Django SCA.rules. We look in that. That's the basic parser configuration file that I showed in the demonstration. To run it, very, very simple. It's a basic help option. We run the 
run the program, we pass it the rules file if we need to, although it will default to Django SCA.rules. And then we pass it a Django project directory, which is the full project for the Django framework that we want to analyze. Uh, in this case, I have a test suite, so I'm just going to pass it the, top, the dot test directory and run it. It's a very quick analysis in this case because we're running through only a couple of files. If I scroll up here, we can see it outputs a stage one where it checks the settings file. In this case, we don't have one, so it passes on to stage two. We're performing a cross-domain XML check, um, giving us a warning. We have URLs that can serve up cross-domain policy. We have a wildcard and a domain attribute. We have a wildcard and a domain attribute for packetheader.net, a different domain. Then we go on to the actual recursive directory checks. It looks through every Python um, file that's in the, in the directory. It will parse out through the rules what the warning is. It'll tell you what the text is that it's found. And it'll also tell you the line number where the actual issue is found. Go through every single field, match those regular expressions, match the logic checks, give you the OWASP output, um, and, uh, well, I think the, fail the, follow uh, the following output is fairly intuitive, right? So you can see here an example of new class forms.py, which is a subdirectory. Uh, we see an OWASP output there. We found a SQL select query. So you, you get the general idea. The final stage of the analysis is we have a file analysis summary, which just tells us that we found four files. We have 18 warnings. We found a, an XML file. We have six warnings on that and a little bit of extra data associated with that. We can output the uh, output to a file right now if we want to just by using dash O. Um, that's a plain text file right now. Uh, but we could uh, move into uh, other options as we expand the project. Let's switch this back to uh, the presentation to finish out. Geoff, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. So Django, right? What What is the use case? Why would someone want to use Django? So Django is a web framework um, for uh, web developers to give a, a, a more secure Python back end to, to uh, websites. Um, the nice thing about Django is you're backed by a very securely typed language, being Python. You've got a model view controller paradigm behind it um, where you're, you're forced into, well, not forced, but you're, you're asked to use a model view controller paradigm where you have a specific way of developing your code, where your model represents your database structure, your views represent your business logic, your um, controller logic is, is in a URL file, which has a regular expression-based syntax. So it gives you a lot of structure into your, into your uh, web application development. So, Jeff, jo is the D silent like in the movie? <laughs> it's the G I believe it is. Okay, uh, I've correct. always pronounced it Django, um, and I think that's the correct pronunciation. <laughs> Joff Unchained is what executive producer Rob said in the chat. There you go. So, okay, no, 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 so, no, never let Joff out of his chain. <laughs> it, it, it could be dangerous. Like, now, now, the reason this all came to existence is we had a customer interested. I can't name the customer, but we've decided to push this project into an open source uh, forum because, largely because we need to really crowdsource on these syntax rule checking entities, right? So um, that's the first goal I have here on this last slide. We need wider audience input on developing the rule sets so that we can make this more useful hey, in, hey, a more, in a more global context. Jeff, could you just switch your video to, to stop sharing your screen unless you had more things to show in the slides? Uh, I am showing a slide right now, or is that not showing up? Yeah, it's not. I think your screen is frozen. Okay, just a minute. You seeing a slide now? Uh, it's small. It's not full screen yet. No. I'm still seeing the same screen as before. Love technical problems. Oh, wait, it changed. Hold on. Features, processing order. Blah, 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 blah. Futures, yeah. There we go. Okay, yeah. it's Make just taking big. its time. Yeah. We got futures slide up now? It's thinking about it. <laughs> okay. Challenges with me and, uh, with me and Skype and uh, presentations. Oh, well. I blame Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> what we want to do with the project is crowdsource on the rules so we can get, get that wider context in um, on contributing to the rules. 
Uh, the project needs to develop to provide a lot more context awareness in terms of the settings parser, um, allowing logic checks to be configured and driven by the rules configuration language. We, I want to separate the uh, warning and error messages into, into another configuration file and move the core logic more into the AST parser so we can minimize the general expression, regular expression matches, and then provide additional output formats. So some basics on futures. Yeah, Jeff, uh, we, we, we can't see your slide in full screen, so... I don't know if you want to maybe just stop sharing your screen and yep. uh, we'd rather see Sorry. you. Rob, uh, Rob is also asking why, why Django and not Ruby on Rails, which is pretty much the same thing, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I think Django's, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to cause a flame war here, but I, yeah, I do flame think, war. I, I do think Django is a, is a really solid project. Uh, from, from my perspective, um, Python is, is one of my favorite languages. I think it's one of the favorite languages of a lot of the security community. And so it's a really natural fit if you're working with web and security to, to, to think about Python, in my opinion. And so I'm a supporter from that perspective. But the other big reason is um, that we, um, we had a customer that was very interested in this. And so we drove that direction for that specific reason. So it's partly where the project was born out of as well. So Excellent. And uh, fit, go ahead, go finish ahead, up. <laughs> you had a, a final slide on there, excuse me. Uh, talk about where people can get it. <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so uh, it's up on Bitbucket, uh, bitbucket.org um, slash my username, JS Thayer slash Django SCA. Um, I've got that slide up now. I don't know if it's visible. No, we can't see it. That's okay. Uh, people uh, can look in the show notes, though, and we have a link to your uh, yeah. project in uh, Bitbucket. Did I say that right? Bitbucket. Yeah, so check out the show notes. Check out the project. I really, really would love to get community input on the actual rule sets themselves. That's really what I'm after um, and why we want to showcase the project. So um, thanks for uh, having the tech segment, Paul. Sweet. Joff, thank you very much. We're going to take a short break and come back and bring you the drunken security news for the show. <laughs> 